Hello, my name is Ivor Posovets from 3D.io and in this tutorial we will focus us on complete scene baking of outdoor architecture data using V-Ray Renderer. I am sure everyone from you have already seen all those impressive architectural images, videos and CG presentations of fantastic buildings and cityscapes of Dubai or United Emirates. And I'm also sure, aside the long camera flights over box-like buildings in the sunlight, you have never seen any kind of animation in it, save maybe few cars, which are anyway rendered as a separate layer. And the question is, if there is no illumination change in the scene and no dynamic light and shadow behavior, why are all those studios rendering these multi-complex scenes frame per frame with V-Ray GI calculation, risking flickerings and other side effects like extremely slow motion blur, instead of baking all those geometries in the static textures, including all light shades and shadows in it? Texture baked environments, at least for the mid plane and background plane of the scene, save later more than 90% of the render time. They are causing no GI flickering and can be rendered within few seconds from any camera view. I will show you in this tutorial on a simplified cityscape, the simple and easy setup for the building block for let's say background city complex. We see here a building block with some 10,000 faces and about 70 megabyte textures including the streets and ground plane. V-Ray 1.5 is set up as a main renderer and the settings are almost default. I will set up the irradiance map to very low so we don't need to screen capture rendering processes for many minutes. The scene consists of one V-Ray sun and in the environment panel I have added a V-Ray sky. If I press now render I will get a nicely shaded 6 o'clock atmosphere with a long shadow stripes and bluish backlight. Let us create a scene of an exactly same look but as a real-time geometry. I will select one set of houses and create a selection set A of it. Selection sets creation is very important. Each set we define here will be later in Flatiron baked into a bitmap. I will select the next building block and put it into the selection set B. I will repeat it with the other two blocks and the ground plane. There is actually no exact rule for the count of faces or objects for the baked bitmap, but be careful not to have too many small polygons by texture baking. If one polygon is on a map smaller than one pixel, the rendering cannot put any color information in it. In worst case, you get sub-pixel trash or simply black areas. After our city was divided into four building sets and one ground, we will bake them into the bitmaps. I will open Flatiron plugin from Utility Menu and set as first hard surface method. Our city consists mostly of primitives and no organic forms and hard surface is the right choice for it. As next I will change the UV channel value to any number higher than 1. The UV channel 1 is already reserved for the city textures we see at the moment and we shouldn't overwrite it. UV channel 6 sounds ok, it doesn't appear nowhere in the scene. Next, I will select what should be baked. I will open selection sets and select them all. We want the whole city as a solution, not the parts of it. Those selection sets are the same sets we have defined a moment ago. You can anytime change them or add new sets to it. I will press finally the undrop button and within few seconds Flatiron will pop up with a representation of an undrop sets group. This means all selection sets are successfully unwrapped into the UV channel 6. You can check it anytime if you select one set, for example set V, put unwrap UV modifier on it, set UV map channel to 6, press reset UVs and press edit button. You see on the UV sheet dozens of buildings from the set D nicely unwrapped and proportionally packed. Ok, let us bake finally those building sets into bitmaps. Select as first the output folder and output bitmap file format. Be careful if you have used the gamma correction. Consult Autodesk Max documentation in order to get optimal results of the saved image files. Most users set up gamma to 2.2 or to 1 and render the maps as a system default gamma, getting too dark on simply wrong results. 
if you use gamma correction only because you have heard it is cool without knowing what the whole parameters means or if you rendered at the end only 8-bit images then you don't need gamma correction at all and just turn it off. As next define the render element. Beware, your current renderer is V-Ray and V-Ray comes with its own sets of render elements. We want to bake a complete solution so we will use V-Ray complete map. Do not use other render maps, they will only crash your V-Ray and Max or deliver black screens. Last setting we need to set up is how and where to store the rendered bitmaps after Flatiron has finished the calculations. Since we have over 100 mixed materials in the scene currently, I want to have as output one generic standard material and all render bitmaps should land into the fuse slot of this standard material. The results should also be self-illuminated. Why? Because all lights, shadows and GI are baked into the geometry and there is no need to lighten or illuminate them again. All the overwrite is toggled in order to replace all materials with a unified baked map. Toggle also viewport to baked in order to get instant texture ob objects into viewport after Flatiron has finished the calculations. That is all. Be sure you have selected all objects and pressed bake button. Depending on your configuration, you can also let your other office computers to render those maps as distributing rendering or to use Flatiron's network rendering option, sharing the scene parts via backburner with other network slave machines. And here is the result. Pretty much the same illusion as a normally rendered V-Ray image. Max viewport makes the textures a bit blurry and dirty, but this is not a problem. If we check the material editor, we will see that our scene has now 5 materials and each consists of one self-illuminated map. I will turn V-Ray off and select the standard scanline renderer, turn off shadows and remove the V-Ray light from the scene. If I press render, you will see in less than a second the fully illuminated city blocks just as we have rendered it 5 minutes ago with V-Ray. But with one important advantage. You can now move in real time around them and render them in a percent of the time of what you have needed before. This technique can be used for any kind of architecture, indoors, simulations or computer games. If you would like to experiment yourself, please visit www.texturebaking.com, download the trial version and give it a try.